Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a city council meeting for March 27th, 2018, beginning at 7.30. Please rise with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will the clerk please call the roll? Cannon? Here. Bud Mintz is absent. Majikis? Here. Gallo? Here. Banger? Here. Diasis? Present. Fiendbus? Present. With six present, we do have a quorum. The first order of excuse me. The first order of business is to approve the minutes from the March thirteenth, twenty eighteen council meeting. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. Banger has made it. Is there a second? Mr. Bean has seconded. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to the minutes? Mr. Diaz's. Thank you. Um, last week, uh, or I'm sorry, at this at that meeting um, <coughs> on page six. I had asked about uh, if there was discussion on a main motion to postpone, um, and uh, the city attorney and I discussed afterwards, and there is the ability yes, to yes. have discussion on a motion to postpone. Um, so I just wanted to have that and make sure it's into the records correctly. Thank you. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and the minutes are approved. This brings us to the mayor's report. Um, there are a number of things that have happened in the last week. I had another fun-filled Jawa uh, meeting, and uh, I do have to thank Mr. Uh, Veenbos, because you were there for the six or seven months before I was there. And... Uh, we the rate for this year is uh, was uh, negotiated and it will be 1.5 percent for water increase, much better than the 25 percent that we were getting in previous years. So, just wanted to pass that on to everyone that there is progress making being made. And uh, Tim, I knew why you were so excited to get to all those meetings. So thank you. We also had the uh, Cub Scouts here, uh, pack 65 and 138. And they were here so that they could get their uh, council uh, adventure badge. So we will be having uh, groups coming just about every week because I guess that's uh, what's going on for the scouts in the area. Also, I am part of the Citizens Police Academy. And I had the opportunity to go with our citizens to Elk Grove to see their facility and use their... Uh, 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 equipment for one of our classes and uh, Chief Nowacki I want you to know that they took us to the spot where Chief Nowacki parked his car it was the highlight of the, the meeting so thank you that's all I have for mayor's report any ward reports seeing none the, city, the council meeting is now open to meet members of the audience for 20 minutes to address the city council on matters that are on the agenda or regarding other issues. We ask that persons wishing to address the city council keep their comments to five minutes in length. Comments must be addressed to the council as a whole through the mayor and profanity may not be used in any form. The first signatory is Jim Perry from 500 North Michigan Avenue from Lamar. Yes, sir. Uh, staff had mentioned that they gave uh, all of you a copy of my PowerPoint, and I just wanted to mention uh, Nicholas Kim, the owner, and I are here to answer any questions. Thank you. Well, thank you for stepping forward. The next person on the signatory list is Patty Callahan. Good evening, and thank you for coming forward. Good evening. Let me adjust this a little bit. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, 
I just noticed um, on our consent for ordinances that there's an approved application for an A2 liquor license for Rep's Place Sports Burger and Beer location in 3200. <coughs> People do want to come to the downtown. I just wanted to mention that. But anyways, um, I uh, read in the Daily Herald that there was a short article about uh, Mr. Diastas and the Committee of the Whole last week had um, brought up a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, an idea that um, we go ahead and as a city start offering uh, tax incentives to bring in restaurants into the city. My question is, uh, where was this idea when we had a structure over the Dominic's building and we were trying to work with um, um, Mr. Fritz Duda on that property there? And where was this idea of having a tax incentive back then and trying to bring things into the city as restaurants and that when we go ahead and if Ryan Holmes is accepted, we're going to be left with two three-quarter acre lots. And that's not a lot of room for tax incentives to bring restaurants in. Thank you for your focus. I really appreciate that. And I truly believe that if we go ahead and if we leave more space there, they will come. And if we're offering tax incentives, that's a great idea. It really is. But not when we've got 100 and, what is it, 12 homes on the table right now? <clears throat> Maybe if we offer this and we kind of wait and see. Because we're, we're going to have two lots out there in the front that are three quarters of an acre first. And... And then there's a pond behind there that has how much space, and then we're going to have these homes. Retail offers us more tax incentives. It's more in property tax dollars, and it offers us sales revenue. And it also gives people jobs. Please consider this as it's still on the back burner. I'm, I'm asking you, please. And I know Mr. Diestas, who, who brought this up, I know that back in the Committee of the Whole, back in September 19, I know that you've been for it since then. You, you made a comment that you had been out to the displaying site of Ryan Homes and that you had looked at them and that you'd even live in one of the homes that they were building. But we don't need more homes. This is our downtown and I think, yes, a tax incentive to bring more restaurants in is a great idea. But let's not continue to build 62 and Gulf Road. That's not our downtown. That's not the heart of Rolling Meadows. Kirchhoff and Meadow is. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming forward. This brings the council to the ordinances for the second reading. <clears throat> Ordinance A is for a reserve volume cap. Every year, the city must reserve the city's volume cap allocation. Once reserved, the city may use the volume cap itself any time during the calendar year 2018 or transfer it generally for value. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Mr. Banjur has made it. So there is a second. <clears throat> is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Majikis? Yes. Gallo? Yes. Banter? Yes. Diestis? Yes. Vimbas? Yes. Can. Yes. Six in favor, none opposed. This, this ordinance is adopted. This brings us to the consent ordinances. The next item, they consist of two items, B and C. Does any alderman wish to remove one item from the consent ordinance? Mr. Banjur? B. We no longer have a consent ordinance. Uh, that brings us to Ordinance B. That's to approve the sign variance for the billboard sign at 3975 Algonquin Road. 
The ordinance, if adopted, would approve a signed appeal for an off-premise advertising digital billboard at 3975 Algonquin Road. At the regularly scheduled Planning and Zoning Commission meeting on March 6, 2018, a public hearing was held and the Plan Commission recommended approval by 5-2-2 vote of this petition with conditions. Do I have a motion to move forward? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Diastis, a second. Mr. Manager, you brought it forward? Uh, yes, I, I haven't supported this uh, in its first or second form, and I won't tonight. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Gallo? Yes. Banger? No. Diestis? Yes. Veenbos? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Majikus? Yes. Five in favor, one opposed. It does, uh, the ordinance does pass. That brings us to ordinance C. The ordinance to approve the application for an A2 liquor license for reps, place, sports, burgers, and beer located at 3200 Kirkshoff Road. This ordinance, if adopted, would authorize sending a liquor license application to the owner of Reps Palace Sports Burgers and Beers. Is there a motion to move forward? So moved. Majikas has made that. It's been seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Banger? Yes. Diestis? Yes. Veenbos? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Majikas? Yes. Gallo? Yes. Six in favor, none opposed. It does move forward. This brings us to the motion to approve the payments of bills of warrants of 32718. The next item of business is, is the motion to approve the warrants from 32718 presented by the Finance Department. Is there a motion to approve the warrants? Mr. Banger has made that. Second. Thank you, Ms. Bajikas. Uh, <coughs> is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Diestis? Yes. Beanbos? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Majikas? Yes. Gallo? Yes. Banter? Yes. Six, six in favor and none opposed. The warrant is approved. The next item on the agenda is the consent resolution. It consists of six items, E through J. Does any alderman wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Mr. Diestis? G and H. That leaves us four items on the consent agenda, E, F, I, and J. <clears throat> the chair declares it in, in order for one motion to consider all four, four resolution, all four resolutions. Is there such a motion? Mr. Greenboss has made that. The question is, shall all four, sorry. Second. You seconded? Second. Oh, sorry. You seconded. Thank you. Is uh, the question is shall all four motions be adopted? E okay. E is resolution number eighteen dash R dash seventeen. Award a contract for the purchase of a twenty eighteen Samuma DC five printer postponed at the March thirteenth, twenty nineteen council meeting. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the purchase of a new 2018 SUMA DC-5 printer for the Department Public Works Department. This equipment has been reviewed, discussed, and supported for replacement by the Vehicle Replacement Committee. F, resolution number 18-R-25 is to award a contract for 2018 street, res street resurfacing program. This resolution, if adopted, would award a contract for the proposed 2018 street program. Approved budget for fiscal year 2018 is $1 million. Construction is approximately $900,000, and engineering is approximately $100,000. Resolution I. The number 18-R-28 award a contract for 2018. Street crack, crack ceiling. This resolution, if adopted, would authorize the award of a contract extension for the preparation and installation of an asphalt crack ceiling on various city streets for 2018 season. Resolution J, resolution number 18-R-29, authorized the order for road salt for the 2018-2019. This resolution, if adopted, 
would authorize the ordering of snow, ice, control salt for the winter season 2018-19. The city has, for the past 18 years, purchased its street salt in conjunction with the State of Illinois Joint Purchasing Program. Again, the question is, shall all four resolutions be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Green boss? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Majikis? Yes. Gallo? Yes. Banter? Yes. 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 Six in favor, none opposed. They move forward. Resolution G is to award a contract for construction engineering services for 2018 street resurfacing program. This resolution, if adopted, would award a contract for the civil engineering services for the necessary construction observation for the for the 2018 street resurfacing program. Is there a motion to move forward? Okay. Hey, Mr. Banger has made that. Has it been seconded? Mr. Diastis? Second. You seconded. You have, I'm sorry, you have first bite of the apple. I'm sorry. You seconded and you have first bite of the apple. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have a few questions on this. Uh, I, I guess um, I'm not sure. Um, did uh, Christopher Burke Engineering, was this an open bid or did we just give it to them? It's $57,000. For many years, it's been part of the standard expectation and requirements of the city engineer to perform these services. So, we, so these are these are no big contracts that we give we give out to Edward to, to Burke Engineering. It's a negotiated contract between the city staff and ourselves, with uh, needing to follow IDOT regulations with regards to the prices because it's um, almost always MFT work in full or in part. Okay. And then um, the nine thousand is that part of the one hundred thousand? No, uh, we contract separately for our soil testing, and uh, that would be a separate purchase order with uh, the soil testing. Okay, so um, the hundred thousand is in the is in the budget. So uh, I'd like to I move to amend this motion to put the $43,000, what's ever left over from the 100000 into the to be used as a road fund. Okay. Yes. Mr. If I, if I, go ahead, Mr. Vogt. Mayor, what typically is done is that the $100,000 that uh, is in the budget covers both the construction engineering for one program and then the design engineering for the next year's program. What we would typically expect to see come September, October, once we get to a certain point into planning the 2019 budget is to uh, look to have the civil engineering design and all the field um, measurements and uh, ex um, accounting and the like for uh, next year's potential program is part of that remaining 43000 That's typically how it works. So it is already in the road program. So this is part of the budget well, it would need process to be, for, for it's part of the it. typical budget process. It would need to be affirmed by the city council next fall when we start to plan the 2019 street program. Okay. There's a motion on the table. I, 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 I'll, I'll Sorry, second Mr. the motion, Mr. but I'd like to make a comment. When yes, Mr. Bean. So let me understand this. So it's forty-three thousand, right? Um, well, there about there's hundred. Yeah, there about forty-three thousand. And, uh, Mr. Bo, you're saying that that amount of money will be left over for next year's road? Uh, no, typically what is done is it would be expended or committed to in 2018 at the end of the year. Should the council, as we typically have done in recent years in September or no later than October, approve a preliminary uh, working list for the street program and authorize the city engineer to start working with public work staff on the planning for those streets. That's how we are able to have a contract already in place that you just approved by doing that work in the fall rather than waiting until the following spring of the budget year. I, I understand that part, but I'd like to clarify something. Mr. Diastas, you're, you're asking to earmark that money for the roads, correct? Is that, are you saying the same thing? I think I'm hearing the same thing and that it's in the road fund to be used for a road construction or road engineering, unless I'm misunderstanding. Yeah, my, my understanding here, as I'm listening, is we'd like the $43,000 earmarked for the road fund for sure. However, that, however, that's done through motion or through 
intention or what? Um, can, I, I know we have a motion on the table, but I'd, I'd like to get this cleared before we go yes. proceed with your Thank motion. You. Thank you. That's just, just my clarification. Okay. Thank okay. you, Mr. Mayor. So can I just ask for a clarification? Because now I'm a little confused. So are you trying to say that you want an extra $43,000 to go into street repaving or building, or do you want, as we're saying, that money is already in the local road fund for engineering to be done released if you want to consider it for the 2019 project so i'm just asking for clarification um again are you asking for that forty three thousand dollars to be put into my additional motion, roads right my motion was to take the forty three thousand and put it towards additional roads because i was not aware uh that we were going to use the remaining money this forty three thousand or some part of it for additional engineering for preparing for 2019 Okay, is that in the budget like this, or is it just... It says $100,000 for engineering on roads. Okay. Um, I think we need to be more clear moving forward. Um, it, it wasn't in there. It just says for roads, and, it, and, and the, the, the resolution says we're only going to use 57000 it doesn't say anything about using the other forty-three thousand, and if that's the if that's what the intent is, then that should probably be in here and communicated to us as well. And we will put that in future. And you can do that uh, in the re in the uh, resolutions. We can also, and I'd suggest, uh, consider doing that in the budget just to make it more clear that it's uh, yep. part for one fiscal year and part for the other. Mr. Veenbass, I'm fine with that. So <laughs> that being the case, then I will. Uh, withdraw my motion to amend if the second will, will withdraw his second. Okay. Mr. Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to kind of go along with what we're talking about here. But just to remind everybody, we've been doing this now for about three years where we've pre-engineered for the next set of streets. I agree that the write-off doesn't really tell you that, though. So, uh, But a question I have about it is, I was a little bit confused, is the $9,000 for soil work for this year, or is that for 2019? It's for 2018. I thought they did that work last year for this year. Not because we did that before. We do it both in advance where needed, and particularly for reconstructions, we do it for resurfacing to test the uh, material that the um, contractor brings in. If we have some areas that need to be excavated or full depth patch, we reserve the right to have the soils people um, take a look at that. There, There is a, in a construction. So that's role. actual construction soil work then, not pre-work. Pre pre the work that's referred to in the um, report tonight is uh, for work during construction. We will have another proposal probably for several thousand dollars in the fall with the engineering services at that time, depending on what streets we decide to work on and uh, what the extent of soil testing needs would be. It varies every year. Okay, and I guess to go along with what Mr. Diaz has said at the beginning, one of his original thoughts, I think, I'm not speaking for him, but speaking for myself, but I guess in the future I would just like to see if we would get other engineering companies to look at this process to see what their cost structure may be. Obviously, I'm fine with this right now, but I think, you know, Burke's had this every year, and it's in a way it's a no-bid contract. And I would just like to see us a little little competition for our dollars because we need to, we need to get every dollar we can into the actual construction. So just a thought for the future. Thank you. I know we got lost in the discussion. Do you have a second that you wish to? Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, remove my second uh, with the stipulation that uh, that we're going to in the future like line item this out as we had discussed already. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Cannon? Yes. Majikis? Yes. Gallo? Yes. Banger? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Beambas? Six approved. Yes. With six approved? None opposed. It moves forward. That brings us to Ezra. A resolution H, number 18-R-27, award a contract to inspect and repair well number two. This resolution, if adopted, would award a contract with Lane Christian Sin Company, formerly Lane Western from Aurora, Illinois, for a project that involves the removal, inspection, and repair of a well, number two, located at 3400 Cam Campbell Street. Do I 
have a motion. So Thank moved, you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and it's been, it's been seconded. Is there just you, uh, Mr. Diastis, you brought it up here. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, my question here, uh, like the other one, is um, it's a $148,000 bid, and it's it's seems to me that it's been a, a, a no-bid contract. I understand this company has worked with us in the past, and they have a good reputation, and they have good work. I understand all of that. But I don't understand why uh, we do not do RFPs. Um, it's been my experience that as good and as healthy and as strong and as great as these people may be, when they know there are being when there's competition, they everybody sharpens their pencil a little bit. Um, I will not vote for this because it's not been has not been put out to bid. And moving forward. I'm putting staff on notice. If we're not going to go out to bid, I'm going to start voting no on all these things. We need to go out to bid so we can get as much money. We can get our, the biggest bang for our buck. And that's all there is to it. Thank you. Any other discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Jaikis? Yes. Gallo? Yes. Banter? Yes. Diestis? No. Vienbos? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Five, approved, five, four, and one opposed. It does move forward. This brings the council to other businesses and reports. I have no appointments, no proclamations. Does the city clerk have a report? No, Mr. Mayor. Well, glad the elections are over, right? <laughs> for now. Okay. Mr. Crumstock. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Obviously, for topics to mention for this meeting of March 27th, we have coming up this Thursday, two days before NCAA uh, Final Four for the men, and then three days before the NCAA Women's. Final Four. We have Thursday, March 29th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Um, we do have at the Rolling Meadows Library, we have the meet and greet and seed swap for all gardeners and those who are interested to hear from Alderman Banger. So, again, that will be Thursday, March 29th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the Rolling Meadows um, Library. And I think that's up in the uh, second floor in the main assembly area. And uh, just a friendly reminder, because it is the season for uh, yard waste to start, um, on Monday, April 2nd, that is the date that we do start our yard waste. In addition, please remember um, to mark a big X on those bags so we do know that that's actually yard waste and not just additional waste that you're putting out there. And if you can put it on the opposite side of waste, that also helps us at the same point in time. We also want to remind people that on Monday, April 2nd, um, refuse and recyclables can be at the curb after 6 p.m. the night before scheduled pickup. And if you want additional information, please contact Public Works at 847-963-0500, or you can always visit our website. Um, obviously, coming up, it's advanced notice, and you'll hear more about this too, is that Earth Day activities are set for April 21st from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., um, individuals who want to participate should meet at Old Public Works, that's 3200 Central Road. For additional information about this creek cleanup, um, please contact Public Works again at 847-963-0500. And then future topics before I have one addition to remind people is that the Economic Development Committee, um, due to a lack of items and the holidays, um, the April meeting has been canceled, but we do have um, some items for the May meeting. Planning and Zoning Commission will be meeting on Tuesday, April 3rd at 7.30 p.m. in the council chamber. There is one item that is actually scheduled for that public hearing. It consists of a sign appeal to allow an electronic message board and additional sign variants for Fuller Car Wash located at 2765 Algonquin Road. That's the C2 General Commercial Services District. Karen Dodge from Quantum Signs is the petitioner. And obviously, you can see the demo happening there and also the uh, Dunkin' Donuts at uh, Algonquin Road. Um, we do want to wish everybody a happy Easter and a good Passover for the next uh, week or so. And then the final item that I do want to remind people is that um, on the doors um, later tonight, we will be posting that finance will be closed 
Um, obviously, this is part of the ERP transition that we've been talking about in the news and views and also putting out in, uh, obviously, the Friday letters. So, again, community development will be open for those days, but we have a static financial program at that point in time as we transition from one um, program to another one. And with that, those are the items of interest for this month. Well, Mr. Crumstock, you're back up again. Obviously, the next thing that we do want to remind um, people is that for February, we had three new businesses. Actually, two of them are in the mm-hmm. same location. Um, it's kind of interesting is that one is the office for the uh, coffee consultant, and then the other one is actually coffee and espresso equipment. Um, the other one that I do want to mention is an art gallery and cafe um, that is located at 4880 Euclid Avenue. Obviously, uh, certain staff have visited. Um, they have hours from noon to about 8 p.m. Um, it really is a nice location. They hope to have a ribbon cutting, and again, we do hope that um, the owner and her mother do very well. Um, some of the bracelets and some of the other items from this uh, gallery are from um, her mother. So. With that, those are the three items that we have for uh, new businesses for February. Thank you, Mr. Kromstak. Mr. Vogt, traffic, staff traffic advisory report. Thank you, Mayor. Just a few things to point out from the um, meeting that was held March 7th by the, this committee. Um, first item is at uh, Old Plum Grove Road, Brockway, at uh, Plum Grove Junior High. We had had a resident request for installing a crosswalk. There's a number of safety reasons not to do so including not observing a whole lot of uh, students that use that. But uh, before we close this matter, we'll contact the school district and have some dialogue with uh, staff at the school to see if there's anything that uh, we didn't take into account when doing that review. Um, Just a reminder, Squib, Ring, Road, Apollo area, we're monitoring that periodically. We did our first traffic counts last fall. We'll do another set this spring. and we'll do another set once school health opens just to monitor the traffic patterns in that area and to um, assist with some future traffic signal modifications that uh, we're planning to um, proceed with in 2019 once we have uh, the school health facility open. Um, Next item, Keith Court. We received a um, resident inquiry about the um, placement of the parking signs, or I should say the parking restriction signs there. Um, some good points were raised. What we typically do with these is uh, put a resident survey out so that we give everybody that lives on that street the opportunity to opinionate on the existing um, conditions versus the proposed changes that would be made. That survey will be going out shortly, and uh, we'll review that um, when we get the responses back next month. Um, item that uh, has come up before a couple times, DuPont Avenue intersection with Vermont Plum Tree um, down at the end of DuPont 90 degree intersection. This item came up uh, for discussion at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting um, last month, and uh, I made the commitment that we would uh, continue to have the Traffic Review Committee monitor that location, uh, not only for the um, proposal that some people have made for a stop sign there, but also concerns about parking on the street. Um, If that development does get approved and proceed, uh, there's a widening of the street that will happen there as part of that development. And uh, we would, uh, at this time, want to see how that takes effect before um, doing anything on a a permanent basis there with uh, anything other than the traffic lane striping that we did there last year. Lastly, uh, and this is a repeat item, too, in regards to request for a guardrail on a section of Arbor Drive down near Woodfield Gardens Apartments. Um, There's some logistic problems there, including right-of-way, but uh, Arbor Drive is a street that uh, we're considering for resurfacing and putting in a new water main there if we um, get the... um, some funding support from the Cook County Block Grant System, so we'll monitor that, and there may be some engineering design things that we can do differently there when we do the street resurfacing to improve that situation. So those were the items of discussion of note for March, and our next meeting is scheduled for April 4th. Thank you, Mr. Vogt. This brings us two matters not on the agenda this evening. Uh, The one item that I have is we had a discussion with Council last fall about uh, doing a uh, traffic count with Kirchhoff Road, so if Council, Mr. Crumstock, 
We actually uh, attempted to do that. Um, then we had uh, weather that was not conducive to it. We did finish part of it. Um, and as we told the Economic Development Committee um, recently, we are going to do it now that comments is also open. So we're trying to compare <coughs> our updates, but we will have those uh, numbers hopefully pretty soon. But we, uh, again, mentioned that at the Economic Development Committee, and we want to make sure that comments was open and flowing. So hopefully our numbers will be better. Thank you. Are there any other matters not on the agenda? Mr. Diestas. Thank you. Um, yes, I would like to ask a staff, um, and, and could be Martha, I'm not sure, um, for the May Economic Development Committee, um, could you possibly or can staff possibly provide the committee a list of vacancies and commercial, commercial open land throughout the city so that we can, we, the Economic Development Committee, can start to brainstorm and come up with ideas uh, on how we can possibly market uh, these vacancies and commercial open land. Now that we have, after so many months, um, flushed out the, um, the restaurant incentive, um, I'd like to take us on to the next project of trying to fill vacancies in commercial open land throughout the city. So since our next meeting is out till May, that will give us enough time. Okay. We'll put that on our list. Thank you. Any other matters? Not, yes, Mr. Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, tonight we approved uh, uh, crack ceiling for streets, and I guess I would like to ask staff um, a rhetorical question at this point. Why don't we include bike paths? And I'd like to see bike paths included soon. I know out in our area there's a partial bike path on Quinton where there's cracks that are literally an inch, inch and a half wide to go all the way across the, the bike path, and they have never been touched by us. So I guess I would like to see us include bike paths that we own to get that work done also. Thank you. You just staff report. Yeah, we can uh, follow up with that. I don't, I don't necessarily need a report, Perfect. just I would like to get it included. Okay. We do inspect the bike paths every year, and uh, I'll certainly take note of that in terms of its the condition assessment and uh, act accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items? There is a request to go into closed session under Illinois 5 ILCS 120-2C-21 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act. It does require a motion and a roll call. Do I have a motion? Mr. Banger has made it. Mr. Mike Jackets has seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Gallo? Yes. Banger? Yes. Yes. Green Boss? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Majikas. Yes. Six in favor and none opposed. We will now enter closed session. The audience and the press are advised that we do not anticipate any taking any action upon returning to open session.